Right. Uh, today, this is Heather Montgomery. Um, I'm with Liam Boyle, and this is the 6th of the 8th, 2022. Um, if you'd like to just introduce yourself for me. My name is Liam Boyle, and I was born and reared in Ohakili Mbod townland on the shores of Upper Loch Erin. I always had a close affinity with the loch as my cousin, the late Celia Rose Maguire, and her family lived on Inisleru Island, Upper Loch Erin, near Loch In fact, Celia Rose Maguire was the last female to live on an island on the loch until her death in February 1994. As children, my sister and I were regulars on the island at weekends, and we even spent our summer holidays over on the early, in the early mid-70s on the island. I would have learned how to row boats and also the names of the islands and the depths of the water from my uncle, Joe Catcard. As the years went by, I and other neighbours would have helped Celia at the winning of the hay and bringing in our mes messages, groceries, etc. from the mainland. In fact, I stayed with Celia when she was sick and on her deathbed. I personally, along with her nephew, Tony McCann, ferried to her remains over the loch to Nocnini Quay, and Celia was interred in Nocnini Cemetery. It was the end of an era. Over the years, the neighbours had helped Celia at regular intervals during haymaking, cutting sticks for the open fire, ferrying in visitors, doctors, nurses and clergymen, and even in later years, the mummers. Celia always threw parties to entertain those who helped her, for there would have been drink on the question, and the mummers would have entertained people as well as various musicians. So that's, as I say, it was the end of an era when Celia died. But anyway, I always had it in my head to build some sort of a vessel. And in 2016, I met Fred Ternan, who had recently started up a group, Loch Erin Heritage. Fred was instrumental in reviving the traditional Loch Erin cot that was almost forgotten. Generally, there was no plans of a Loch Erin cot, but people built them of various sizes to suit their needs. What makes the Loch Erin cot unique from others is that both ends are similar, basically no stem nor stern. However, however Fred came across drawings that are recorded in the Clower records by a Newton Butler school teacher, Miss Detta Began. This Detta would have recorded this possibly in the mid-1950s. Detta drew down a sketch and the measurements of her family cot. And Lockeran Heritage decided that they would follow these measurements for building their cots. I also decided to build one, and it was approximately 50 years since 50 years ago when the late Paddy Gunn of Corrithristian built the last wooden cot here in South Fermanagh. I purchased large timber locally and stainless steel screws, marine epoxy, adhesive towards the building. Originally, cuts would have been built out of whatever timber was available, but larch is one of the better timbers for marine use. Basically, these cuts are made up of three doors joined together with buttons and crutches. Crutches is the name given to the ribs of the cut. When built, the cot was painted with marine paint. Originally, they would have been painted with liquid tar. We then named the cot RC Nocnini, as this is the name of the general area where the cot was built in 2018. Then we had a launch day, and the cot was blessed by local RC priest, Father Jerry Owell, and the Church of Ireland minister, Alistair Donaldson. It was a historic day by all accounts. The fairy tale of this story is that in his first regatta, wherein, wherein it was crewed by the catchers of West Island, Dorsey Nocninicott won the races overall. The use of the cot originally as a, 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 a water vessel 
what would have been its primary use. So that I read in one of your notes that there were ones for, for transportation and ones for cattle and stuff. So the one that you rebuilt would have been more for... The, the ones that we built, rebuilt to replicate would have been more for passenger use and general use as such. But originally the cuts would have been... They would have evolved out of the log boat and the dugout canoes. And the cuts would have been used... A lot of people lived on the islands in the 1800s. And the cuts would have been used for transport of farm animals as well. And the bigger cuts even moved building materials on the lower lock from Balik up to Enniskillen. Cuts was used for even bringing children to Crum, bringing them from Crum estate across to the Curlat School. The cut was the workhorse of the day. Yeah, sounds fascinating. So it does. And is your the the vessel the cut that you created? Is it still in the water and are you still using it? And well, it, it's still busy in use. So you take it out of the water in the winter time. Uh -huh. But now there is approximately seven cuts built to the same specifications on the upper lock and a few times a year, different groups we do organise regattas and have a bit of entertainment racing them. Whereas years ago, the landlords and the people that own the big houses, they would have used their farm labour. When the work was done at the end of the season, the farm labourers would have used the cuts as entertainment. The races would have been a byproduct, sort of, mm -hmm. just for entertainment. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the people that have these cuts, the community that you would, the sailing, the, the cut community, I suppose you would describe them as, maybe. Um, is there a name for the the, pe the people that sail these cuts, or is there like a, a, a? I mean, I'm just thinking locally. Have you got like a group name or anything, or? Well, well, I was part of a group recently there to assist them build a cut, and we called ourselves, or rather, they called themselves whatever, the West Island Cut Builders, ah. and that would be because they're a cat cart family and they're associated with five or six generations that can go back in their heritage on the upper lock, living on various islands. So it was very much an essential item for an island uh, community, really? Oh, very essential until then possibly dating the 80s, 1900s, wooden clinker boats then came in and then steel came in and fibreglass came in and eventually the cut was, the wooden cut was gone by the 1950s, 60s mm -hmm. and steel cuts made an appearance then. And of course the, then bridges being put in and, and stuff. Bridges, there was bridges here built 1933 connecting Derry Lynn and Listeners Gay. and prior to that there was two or three different ferries from the Derry Lynn area mm -hmm. towards Listeners Gay. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much Liam for coming in and giving us some of your background and some of your story. Um, is, is there anything else you want to add to it at all? You're no, more, that's no, a bit it. Thank no, you. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just stopped this nice and well. well. Um,